Hello art friends, I'm Christine and today we are diving into the mesmerizing world of watercolor painting. In this video we will be exploring the very first layers of realistic watercolor painting. These initial steps are where the magic begins. I'll share my tips and techniques to help you create stunning botanical watercolor paintings. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button, so you never miss out on the artistic adventures we embark on here at Christine Art, with lots of helpful tips and tricks, tutorials, and lots of interesting content for your artistic journey. Let's make this journey together! Now let's jump right into the first layers of realistic watercolor painting. Starting my demonstration with poppy flower painting. With the round synthetic brush I apply water layer to the petal that I will be working on. And this is a side view for this poppy flower, so there's one petal almost for the whole composition that is visible to the viewer. And water amount is just enough for watercolors to be moved. If I will lift my paper, there the water will not be dripping off the paper surface. And I'm starting with transparent layer of red watercolor mix, also pink and yellow. Red watercolor mix goes to the shadow area where is warmth, pink watercolor mix goes to the lightest part and also yellow goes to the shadow area where we see that the light is shining through the petal surface. First layers are super light transparent watercolor mixes, so we can keep light effect on the painted subject. And I'm moving, still using my round synthetic brush and moving watercolors. Maybe first layer seems a bit chaotic on this poppy flower, because if we look at the reference, there's a lot of going on on that poppy petal surface. There's darker areas, lighter areas, there are some folds, also uh, cooler, warmer. And taking a darker mix of watercolors, where I have Sennelier Red, Perlin Maroon and a little touch of Perlin Violet, and I'm adding this darker mix to the lower part of the petal, where is the darkest part of this petal. And carefully moving with my brush, with uh, light brush strokes, this darker mix to the lighter area. With clean and dry brush, I'm lifting out some amount of watercolors, especially where we have light. It's important in realistic painting to keep light areas light. They are even wider than they appear in the reference. With watercolors, it's important to keep light. We can always go darker. The problem is to keep light and to make something lighter if we overpaint it with layers. So my light areas in the first layers are much wider than they appear in the reference. After many layers, I will end up with the same size that we have in the reference. Now taking finer tip brush loading with watercolor mixes, and while the surface is still moist, I'm adding some little pieces of darker areas that I see in the reference. Those little folds and darker shadow areas underneath the fold. And after this first layer, I will wait for the layer to get dry. And here's the finished result, applying last final touches. And this is after one hour of painting, of transparent layers, detailing, finer brush strokes, but everything started from the first layer. Putting it right, where are tonal values, keeping light light is the basic, it's like the base for your realistic painting and setting tone for the whole process and the finished result. If you are interested in full tutorials, also this poppy flower, you can consider joining my Patreon account, where I have more than 180 tutorials in real time with explanations along with line drawings and references. But that's not all. I also run an online art school with comprehensive lessons, challenging assignments and live painting sessions that allow you to grow as an artist at your own pace 
Plus, each month we host live feedback sessions where I personally review and provide feedback on students' paintings, helping you refine your skills. Shout out to all my Patreon students. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. Next demonstration is a plum. I have line drawing and starting with water layer, just enough to keep moist surface and watercolors to be moved with the brush. They're not floating by themselves. I'm in control. I'm lifting and as you can see the shine, there are no water puddles. I even can paint when my paper is standing vertically. That's the amount of water that should be. I'm taking manganese violet and applying to the shadow area. Permanent rose goes to the lighter part and again layers are transparent. Even we see that the subject is quite saturated and dark, but I'm always starting light. I feel more confident starting light. I also always start from the shadow area. It's easier to get there and then slowly move to the lighter part. With round subjects, it's important to have light and fluffy edges. It is also called disappearing edges because this is round subject. It's not ending where we see on the paper. It goes around behind what we even can see, what the viewer can see. So we need to get this illusion that this subject on this flat surface is round. So no crisp edge lines, it will only make this plum look flat. Adding a little darker mix also to the shadow and as you can see I'm leaving little gap like few millimeters off the edge. I will later move watercolors there. Working more on the shadow, lower part of the plum, using round synthetic brush. I'm not too concerned about precision. With round synthetic brush I'm making wider brush strokes, smoother brush strokes and pushing watercolors where I need them, from the shadow towards the lighter part. Of course be careful with outer edge, don't go over the edge, even if you know that maybe your hand shakes a little bit, mine does a little bit and I know that then I will draw my initial outline of the subject a little bit smaller so I know that I, can, I have some room for mistakes over the edge. Adding yellows to the half tone area where we see in the reference this middle body part of the plum, there is a lot of yellow. Manganese violet also to the lower shadow part. Violet is a nice pigment for the light shadow area, for the reflected light area. And moving slowly to the upper part, again remember about light. Keeping light, light. With watercolor painting it's super important, it's crucial to have more light than it even looks in the reference. If you will lose light, then your painting can look a bit heavy and flat. And first, watercolor layers are light as you can see and they don't even look like you have reference. So don't expect after first layers to have a look of a finished work. Be patient with watercolors and realistic painting. You need to have a lot of patience to be ready to dive into work and last till the end. For example, for this plum, I will add many, many layers to get this roundness, to get this richness. So even five, six layers, it's nothing. Adding more, while the surface is still moist, I'm adding more to the shadow part. As I'm applying layer, I'm washing my brush, cleaning in paper towel and smoothing the applied layer. So the transition is gradual, smooth. There are no crisp edges. Everything is smooth, beautifully blending together. And to get clean blending of watercolor mixes, you don't need to overwork that area. 
If you smooth, do it once and leave it. If you will do again and again in the same area, then watercolors can get dull and dirty look can appear. Be light, hold your brush light as well. Everything should be really light and transparent at this stage. And as I'm applying layers, remember the importance of light area. It should be wider than it is in the reference. In the reference we see a small piece of light on the plump surface. In my painting it looks much, much bigger. After many layers it will become the same size as it is in the reference. And here, after many, many layers, Plum is reaching finishing stage and you can see my light area became smaller, but that transition from half tones to the light is very subtle, very smooth. That only is possible when you have a wider area of light and then you gradually, gradually make it smaller. And a finished painting of this plum. Full tutorial is available on my Patreon in real time and with explanation from the beginning till finishing touches of this painting process. Consider joining my Patreon, you will get access for 30 days, cancel anytime. Next one, fly agaric, a very interesting mushroom and here we have a completely different starting point. We have a lot of white things on the mushroom head. I'm not using masking fluid. I will not be using white gouache paint or white pigment. All is done only with my brush. Also, I'm not applying water layer as I did with the previous demonstrations. I'm going straight using finer tip brush, using my red watercolor mix and I'm applying little brush strokes on the mushroom head around those white little things that we have on mushroom head. So this is a little bit longer process, but it's definitely worth it. It's much better than using white pigment, white gouache paint. Nothing is whiter than the paper surface you have. Not, not any pigment is this white as your paper. Slowly, little brush stroke at a time, I'm applying watercolors. Now, this lower part of mushroom head is a bit darker than the upper part of this mushroom head, so take this into notice where are tonal values. I'm starting from the shadow and building these little brush strokes towards the lighter part and painting around those little white spots on mushroom head. I'm speeding up this process, the technique is the same all around this mushroom head, but it takes time quite long to finish this mushroom head, but it's definitely worth it, it looks really accurate and realistic. Also while you are adding these little brushes, they give a little texture on the surface of mushroom head, and again upper part is lighter where we have light, a little bit of pink goes there, it's cooler lower part is warmer, there are yellows, reds and carefully brush stroke after brush stroke I'm covering the whole surface leaving light area wider than it appears in the reference. Even here maybe it's instantly hard to tell where is light, it's just everything is red and compared to those white spots it doesn't look like, like there is any light but there is, there's this lighter part on the mushroom head and if you squint your eyes you will notice that the lower part and right side is much darker compared to the light area which is on the right. And here is the finished piece after many many layers adding more touch to the shadow part. It looks realistic, it looks natural because we have tonal values, many many layers Watercolor is a transparent medium and we can get saturated results with layers, with transparent layers. If you will go straight in the first layers with super saturated watercolors, you will end up with flat looking painting. The beauty of watercolors is in the layers. The more you will add, the more fuller, realistic your subject is going to look. 
Last demonstration is a beautiful peony flower. Here we have multiple petals and I'm starting with one petal at a time, applying water with round synthetic brush and going from the shadow area with transparent watercolor layer. My recommendation with more advanced subjects is to start not with the main part, the middle part, the most maybe eye-catchy part, like we have this in the middle petal. Start with the smaller petal. Start with maybe in the back, there's this darker visible petals or the side petals. Don't go straight with the very first brush strokes to the main part. Starting from a smaller area and not so visible area gives you greater confidence in the beginning and when you are painting. Maybe if you make some little mistake on the side petal, it will not be so obvious if you will go straight into the middle petal, the most visible one, and you make a mistake in the very first layer or in the painting process. Start with a smaller, not so visible area is always my go-to and recommendation for my students. Especially if you struggle and don't know how to start. This fear of black canvas can be overcome by starting small. I applied transparent layer with rounder synthetic brush and now I'm going with finer tip brush while the surface is still a little bit moist and again look at my light area it's quite large compared to the reference and I'm with finer brush strokes I'm applying darker area that we have on the lower part of this petal be careful with edges we have petal on the left and on the right and petal uh, peony petals have a nice texture like very fine lines so using finer brush i'm applying super transparent light lines to this petal now let's do the main petal which is most visible and the most shinier in this composition starting with applying water with round synthetic brush just enough for watercolors to be moved Applying watercolor mix on the top, we see that this petal and peony flower are quite round and the upper part is curling away from our eyesight, which is it's going into the shadow, then the lower part is going under, also in the shadow, and the middle part stays light. Again, keeping light wider than it appears in the reference, carefully moving watercolors from the shadow towards the lighter part washing my brush and smoothing the applied watercolors towards the lighter part so i have smooth and gradual transitions from the shadow to half tones and to light area everything is light very smooth carefully pushing watercolors with my round synthetic brush full tutorial of this peony flower is available on my patreon from the beginning touches till finishing part in real time and with explanation of the whole painting process. And here's the result. After many, many layers, we have a realistic looking peony flower on a flat surface. Starting light, really transparent, moving forward with transparent layers, fine brush strokes, keeping light areas light and looking for tonal values to create volume. There you have it, my fellow art friends. The very first layers of realistic watercolor painting can be enchanting and setting tone for the whole painting process. Remember, practice makes progress. Don't be afraid to experiment, try new approaches, try my techniques or look for other artists, other tutorials and try their techniques. It's important to experiment, important to try different methods so you will find what suits best for you. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow art enthusiasts. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the Christine Art channel for more inspiring tutorials, tips and tricks to enhance your artistic skills. Thank you for joining me today. Keep your brushes wet and creativity flowing. Stay tuned for more exciting content and see you on my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.